time for chemistry. Time for chemistry. Time for chemistry. Time for Time for chemistry. Don't have a cow, man. Chemistry. 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 All right, students, that was fun. Uh, now we're gonna study ionic compounds in chemical reactions. All right, students, once again, we're studying ionic compounds, but this time ionic compounds in chemical reactions. So we're gonna add in chemical reactions right there. RxN is a shorthand for reaction. This is a warm up. both question number one and two, you should be able to answer right now because of your knowledge of chemistry. Draw the Lewis structure for the following elements and identify if they want to gain or lose electrons. Here's sodium's Lewis structure. It has one dot. Let's review why. Sodium uh, Lewis dot Lewis structure has one dot because sodium is right located right here on the periodic table, and uh, it's in the third row, meaning that it has electrons on the first shell, second shell, and the third shell, but only has the one electron on the third shell. And the uh, Lewis structure shows the valence electrons, which are just the electrons in the outermost shell. So that's why we have one dot right here for sodium. For chlorine, we're going to have seven dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's because chlorine is located right over here. It's also on the third uh, row, meaning it has electrons on the first shell, the second shell. And it has almost all of the electrons on the third shell, but it doesn't have all of them. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven electrons on the third shell. Okay, magnesium right here. It's two, two dots for magnesium. Oxygen right here, six, six dots for oxygen. That, those dots correspond to the valence electrons of these atoms. Those are the electrons in the outermost shell. Okay, let's go back and answer the next question, which is, uh, identify if they want to gain or lose electrons. Well, they're going to be gaining or losing electrons depending on their location in reference to the noble gas elements. Okay, so sodium is number 11. The closest noble gas element is number 10, meaning sodium is going to lose its one valence electron to have the same amount of electrons as neon. So sodium will lose electrons. Let's look at chlorine. Chlorine is right here on the periodic table. It's number 17. The closest noble gas to chlorine is argon, number 18. So chlorine will gain an electron to have the same amount of electrons like argon. So the answer here is gain electrons. You are going to figure out whether magnesium loses or gains and oxygen loses or gains. It's going to be your question for you. Okay, next question is what happens when you have a positive electrical charge? and a negative electrical charge next to each other? The answer is they will attract. 
Hopefully you're able to, you're able to answer those warm-up questions with ease because those are the easy ones. Okay, here's our first uh, chemical reaction that we're going to write down here for the uh, formation of the ion sodium, uh, the ionic compound sodium chloride. We have sodium atom here and we have chloride, chlorine atom here. And it says in our notes that uh, um, atoms become ions after they gain or lose electrons. So sodium is going to be losing that electron and giving it away to chlorine. Now this is chloride and this sodium is now a positive one charge after it's gotten rid of that electron and this chloride is a negative one charge after it's gained that electron. So how do we write the chemical formula in a chemical reaction? Well, remember chemical reactions have the reactants and the products and they have the arrow separating the two. And they also have the plus sign uh, meaning reacts with. So we have sodium reacts with chlorine and it produces, that's the arrow, sodium chloride. And all of uh, the ionic compound is balanced because there's a positive one charge and negative one charge. So you only need one of each, which is the reason why there's no subscripts written right here. You just need one of each because the charge is balanced. And the entire chemical reaction is balanced because there's the same number of atoms of each element on the reactant side and the product side. Okay. There we go. Okay, here's another easy example. Remember that an ionic compound is formed through a metal and a non-metal. So let's make sure that magnesium is a metal and oxygen is a non-metal. Taking a look right here, uh, this periodic table, remember this is online for you to look at. Magnesium is located right here, oxygen is right here. So that's a yellow metal with a green non-metal. So that means this is an ionic compound, we're good to go. Okay, so what happens here? is one magnesium will give away both of its electrons to oxygen and oxygen just so happens to need two more electrons so that it has the closest so it has the same amount of electrons as the, its closest noble gas so once magnesium um, gets rid of both of these electrons now magnesium has a positive two charge while oxygen has a negative two charge because it gained those two electrons from magnesium. So how do we write it in a chemical formula? Well, it looks like this. Magnesium plus oxygen produces, this is called magnesium oxide, okay? And um, you only need one magnesium and one oxide to balance out the charges. See, the charges are balanced with a positive two and a negative two, the charges are balanced. Okay, and is the chemical reaction balanced? Yes, it is, because there's the same number of atoms of each element on the reactant side and the product side. Let's count them out. One magnesium, one oxygen. They're separated, so if I was gonna draw them out, they would look like this. Here's my magnesium, and here will be my oxygen. They're separated from each other, but they produce magnesium oxide, and these guys over here are bonded to each other. We can show like a little line to show there's a bond. Okay, and that's what happens. Okay, we made it to a little bit more of a difficult example. We got magnesium and we got chlorine. Uh, we wanna write the chemical formula in, for this reaction down below. Well, this is not gonna be a perfect balance like it was before. Um, because if you notice, chlorine just needs to gain one electron. So chlorine gains its one electron. Now chlorine becomes the chloride, but magnesium doesn't lose both of its electrons. So what has to happen is there has to be another chlorine uh, atom that comes along with its seven valence electrons. There's seven, seven valence electrons. And uh, then now this magnesium electron can give it to the second chlorine okay and now there's two chlorines and one magnesium on this balance beam and do the charges balance well yes they do because once magnesium gives away these two electrons it has a positive two charge just like before but each chlorine has a negative one charge that's a total of negative two and positive two so that's balanced so how are we going to write this in a chemical reaction? Well, it'll look like this. There's our one magnesium. We'll draw it out. And this is how you write two separate chlorines, 2Cl. That lets me know that there's two 
separate atoms of chlorine. And I'm saying the word separate because they're not bonded together. But once they react, then we get a compound that looks like this, MgCl with a little two right there. Now you put the little two down there as a subscript to show that the chlorine bonded to the magnesium in this ionic compound, in this ionic bond. The negative charges attracted to the positive charge and it formed an ionic bond. This big two in front called the coefficient, this is a coefficient number two, is different. Whenever you have a coefficient, um, it's showing that they're separated. But when you have a little subscript number right here, it shows that they're bonded. So the way that you would draw that would be something like this with a chlorine and a magnesium in the middle and another chlorine and they're bonded. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, let's just keep pumping through these examples and maybe you'll start getting it. Okay, so let's um, draw a picture of how the electrons move in a reaction between lithium and oxygen. Well, it would, be helped, it would help to write the Lewis dot structures like I was showing you above. Lithium, um, in its Lewis dot structure only has one dot because it has uh, only one box on the second row of the periodic table, which corresponds to the number of electrons that it has on the outermost shell. So lithium only has one dot because it has one electron, one valence electron. So there's lithium. And oxygen is over here, and you should be familiar with oxygen by now. It has six. Okay, so maybe you can see the problem that's happening right here. Um, one lithium can only give away that one valence electron to oxygen. Well, that's the, the issue is now lithium has a full octet, or excuse me, lithium has a f uh, complete outer shell because when lithium, oops, when lithium loses that valence electron, then it, then it becomes, then it has the same amount of electrons as helium, um, which means that it's become stable. But the problem is oxygen only gained one electron. That's an issue because oxygen needs to gain two electrons to be like its closest noble gas, neon. Okay, so what has to happen is another little lithium has to come around and uh, it has to give its valence electron to oxygen as well. Okay, and once lithium gives its, its valence electron, it has a positive one charge. And once oxygen gains two electrons, it has a negative two charge. So how do we write this in a chemical formula? Well, it's gonna look like this. Two lithiums reacting with one oxygen will produce lithium with a little two right there, oxide. All right, this is the correct chemical reaction for uh, the formation of the ionic compound lithium oxide. Okay, this is a, this example is about as difficult as we're going to get today. It's uh, the reaction of boron and oxygen. Well, boron, uh, it has three valence electrons. So when we draw the Lewis structure, it's going to be three dots. Now remember, it has three dots because of its location on the periodic table. Um, boron has has three is three spaces on the second row of the periodic table, meaning it has three electrons on the second shell. Uh, for boron and oxygen you can count but start you're starting to memorize that it has six dots okay uh, well you can probably start seeing the the pattern here is that this boron will give this boron will give two electrons to oxygen and now this oxygen is happy it has enough electrons it it, it gained electrons to have the same amount of electrons as its closest noble gas so it's stable but boron right here, if you notice, only lost two. Well, if you look at the periodic table and you lose two, one, two, then you have the same amount of electrons as lithium, and that's no good. We need boron to lose one, two, three. So it has the same amount of electrons as the closest noble gas, helium. This might be confusing because boron's over here on this side, and you're like, well, the closest noble gas is neon. No, I'm not talking about physically on the periodic table. I'm talking about the numbers. What one number is closer? What number is closer to five? Is the number two closer to five or is the number 10 closer to five? Hopefully you answered the number two. Okay, so what ends up, what has to happen is there has to be another oxygen, oxygen for boron to give away that electron. So boron ends up giving away that one electron. 
now that boron is happy. It has a positive three charge. But what's the issue now? Well, this oxygen isn't happy. So how is this uh, ionic compound going to form? Well, we have to add another boron, boron with the three valence electrons. Uh, this boron is going to give this one valence electron to this oxygen. And now this oxygen will be uh, happy and it will have a negative two charge. Um, but this boron is not happy. It still has two extra valence electrons that it needs to give away in order to become stable. So what has to happen is another oxygen comes around. Here's our, 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 here's our oxygen with six valence electrons. And this boron, both of these, both of these guys can go right over here. And now finally we have balance in the force. I don't know why I said that. We have balance. Um, if you look at our uh, balance beam, we have two borons on this side and three oxygens on this side. But that ends up being positive six charges and negative six charges. So that's balanced out. These are balanced out charges. So the correct formula for um, uh, bor boron oxide, um, you'll see it in the product. So the two reactants are boron reacting with oxygen. Is that the correct way to write it? No, it's not because we have two separate borons. So we need to put a two right here and we have three separate oxygens. So we need to put a three right here. So two borons reacting with three oxygens produces one molecule. That's one molecule of boron oxide. And the way you write it is like this. The subscript numbers the subscript numbers, which are these tiny numbers on the right-hand corner of each element symbol, show that the uh, elements are bonded in one molecule. The coefficient numbers, which are these big numbers in the front, show how many of each uh, atom or molecule that there are. Okay, and you need to know the difference between the coefficient numbers and the subscript numbers and what they mean for chemical reactions. Very important. Okay, just to be really clear, we're going to draw these out and color code them. So we got two separate borons and we got three separate oxygen atoms. Look like that. But when we draw them inside of one molecule, they're all connected. So we're going to draw Okay, and they're all bonded. We're going to draw a little line to show that they're bonded. And remember, this is just one molecule. That's just one of them. You don't have to put a coefficient of one right here because you already wrote B2O3. So that one is unnecessary. It's like redundant. Okay, I hope this is making sense between the coefficient numbers and the subscript numbers and what they mean in the uh, chemical formula and the chemical reactions. All right, your turn. You're going to be drawing the Lewis structures and showing what uh, is happening to the electrons like I've been doing in the previous examples. And you're going to write the chemical um, formula for the reaction. Okay, I'm about to give you the correct answer pretty soon, but you're going to answer some questions about this first. All right, here comes the correct answer. There it is. If you did something like that, drew something like that, then you're doing the right thing. So let's go ahead and explain it with words. When aluminum is reacting with chlorine, there needs to be uh, three chlorine atoms per every one aluminum atom in their chemical reaction to, to produce a, uh, an ionic compound of aluminum chloride. So during the reaction, um, aluminum is going to be giving its valence electrons, it's going to be giving them away to each of the chlorine uh, atoms. Once the aluminum gives away its three electrons, it becomes aluminum ion with a positive three charge. And once chlorine gains the one electron that it needs, it will um, uh, have a negative one charge. It will be called chloride ion. So aluminum reacting with three chlorine atoms, one aluminum atom, one aluminum atom reacting with three chlorine atoms will produce one compound of aluminum chloride. Thank mm -hmm. you.